God is good. Would you join me today in prayer? Let's just bow our hearts. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's approach the throne today. Father, today, we just want to say thank you. God, we're so grateful for a church. Lord, where would we be if not for the Rock Church World Outreach Center? What you're doing here in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet. Lord, we're so grateful that you planted a great church. Grateful for our founding pastors and leaders that went before us, God. Those who made sacrifices for us to be here today, Lord. We just want to praise you and thank you for the work that you've done in our hearts and in our lives through this place, God. What an awesome place it is, Lord. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven, Lord, where you open up and you speak to us. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Lord, we didn't come today to hear from a man or a woman, from the young or the old, from the black, the white, the brown, any other color we could imagine. We came to hear from you. So come, Holy Spirit, be our teacher, be our guide. Give us your vision, your wisdom, your instruction, your direction, even the correction we need for our lives. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. Today, God, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to have a good understanding. May we be the good ground where the word is sown, and may it produce fruit in each and every one of our individual lives. Today, Lord, above all other days, God, if we could ask for a birthday gift, it would be this, Lord, that you bless all the churches that are in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet that are both preaching and hearing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are our brothers and sisters, Lord, and we do not think of ourselves as any better than anybody else, Lord. We don't boast in our efforts and our labors and our work or in our accomplishments. God, we boast in Jesus Christ and him alone. He is the senior pastor of this church and of every church. He is the senior leader, and so right now, Jesus, we pray that you would bless the churches. God, be amongst them as you're amongst us. Bless the Baptists, the Lutherans, the Methodists, Episcopalians, Charismatics, Pentecostals. God, bless the Calvary chapels and the assemblies of God and the four square denominations, uh, Victory, and, and all the different great churches that are out there, Lord. We pray that you would bless our Catholic brothers and sisters and Adventist brothers and sisters, those that meet on the Sabbath day, God. Lord, God, we pray that if they're lifting up your name, preaching your gospel truth, Lord, that you would bless them as you would also bless us. Jesus, Mighty name, God, we're all in agreement. We say? Oh, that was weak. Come on, we say? Amen. Amen. There you go. Today, as you get your Bibles, I want you to turn to me to Matthew chapter number 16. We're going to be in one of our foundational verses as a church. And as you turn to Matthew chapter 16, I just want to give you a thought, which is really the title of today's message. But we're going to weave this thought all the way through the message today. Here's the thought as you turn to Matthew chapter 16. The thought is this. What God has started, the devil cannot stop. Matthew chapter number 16, Jesus is traveling, he's talking to his disciples. Jesus is speaking to them and he says, hey, who do the people say that I am? They chime in, they say, well, Jesus, some people think that you're Elijah, come back. Some people think that you're the prophet. Some people say that you're the Messiah. There's a lot of stuff going on about Jesus, a lot of things being said about Jesus. And then Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, well, who do you say that I am? See, it's very important for all of us, not just to know about Jesus, Not just to know what people think about Jesus, because there are a lot of things that could be said about Jesus even in our day and age today. He was a good teacher. He was a good man. He promoted love. He was a rabbi. He traveled. He died, right? All sorts of things could be said about Jesus. And even though it's good to know what people say about Jesus, it's more important to be confronted personally with this question, what do you say about Jesus? Who do you say that he is? Now, Peter, as the leader of the group, he steps up kind of as the spokesman for the, for the group, and, and he says, well, Jesus, you are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus turns to Peter, and he says, hey, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, Peter. You didn't get that listening to what people say about me out there in the world. No, it was my Father in heaven who gave you that revelation of who I am. And then he goes on in verse number 18, and look at what it says in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18. This is one of our foundational verses as a church. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now, Jesus isn't saying that he's going to build the church on the back of Peter. Peter is just a man. We know that there is no other foundation that can be laid except that one which already has been laid, and that is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is saying, Peter, upon your confession of faith of who I am as a Christ, that is the solid rock. That is the foundation of what I'm going to build my church on, which is the confession of who I am as the Christ. And he goes on, And he says, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, if you got the OKJV version in your hand, right? The old King James version, not the NKJV. You got the KJV. It says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
Verse number 19, he says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now I want you to notice something. Jesus says he is building his church. In other words, what God has started, the devil cannot stop. That's why he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Listen, guys, the church is God's plan for the earth today. There is no plan B. God does not have a backup plan. There is not something waiting in the wings in case the church fails. God invested his life. He invested his blood. He invested his spirit into the church of Almighty God. And the church is God's plan of this age and this dispensation. God is moving in and through his church today. Now, the devil's going to try and stop it. The devil's going to try and halt it and hinder it. The devil's going to try and defeat it. But guess what? Jesus said, I will build my church. See, what God is building, what God is invested in, what God is doing, and any devil in hell, no demon, no will of man can stop the plan of God for the earth today. Jesus says the gates of hell, the authority of hell, shall not prevail against it. But look at what he goes on to say, and he says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That's an amazing thought, isn't it? In other words, Jesus says, I've given you access. I've given you an entrance. I have given you authority. And therefore, whatever you bind on earth will be bound where? In heaven. And he says, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, what heaven starts, what heaven has bound, what heaven has started, guess what? All of hell cannot stop it because Jesus has given us his authority here on the earth. He's given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So when we say devil, oh no, hell, no. Now, I didn't just cuss in the pulpit. Hell is a place, and we're talking about the the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when we see hell coming up trying to stop the work of God, and when we bind it and we say, hell, no, you cannot stop the work of God. You will not hinder what God is doing on the earth. You will not bind up the work of God. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And when you start to release your faith, when you start to release blessing, when you start to release the goodness of God, whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. And what God has started... The devil cannot stop. You say, well, pastor, that's great for the church, but what about me? Because sometimes it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get distracted. And when God starts doing something in your life, don't you know the devil's going to come and he's going to try and stop you. He's going to try and hinder you and halt you. He's going to try and defeat you. He's going to try and deplete you. See, the Bible says the devil comes only to steal, deplete, to to take away your resource, to to kill, to defeat you, to get you to to halt at death and and to destroy you, right? To steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus, Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. The devil wants to delete you. He wants to wipe out your memory from the earth. influence and all of the heritage that God has given you. And so it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to say, well, I just want to give up and quit and sit down and stop. And we oftentimes stop at dead situations. I want to show you a testimony today of a wonderful lady in our church who actually died, but God was doing something in her life and he continued this great work. Check out the testimony of Deborah. About nine months ago, was getting ready to go to work in the morning, like any other day, feeling good, but as I was getting up, realized that I couldn't move my neck, couldn't feel my arm, a little nauseated, so it was a little different as I started moving in the morning, something knew something wasn't right, and called 911 for precautions. Um, There was a ring at my doorbell, Went and answered the door and the paramedics, the last thing I remember is they were setting up the gurney in my living room and I passed out. I suffered two massive brain aneurysms and I passed on the operating table twice and had a few strokes. Um, They actually had called my family to give their last um, request that I wasn't gonna make it. My head swelled five times its size and I was just a mess. I was a bloody mess. My family members tell me, told me that they were called all into the room to say their last goodbyes. After following uh, my surgery, I fell into, um, I was like in a coma for about a week or so, and but I woke up and felt no pain. Just noticed my family was around me, was um, and I recognized them, and didn't have no seizures, wasn't on no heavy medication. I, you know, I knew it was Jesus. 
I knew that God took it from me. I was able to visit with my neurosurgeon, who was in shock to see me and wouldn't stop squeezing my arm, my hand. He was squeezing my hand so tight through the whole visit um, because the last time he seen me, I was a bloody mess. And I had passed on his operating table and he was literally fighting for my life. Um, but so when I went to go visit him, he was so glad and in shock to see me. He said, you're a miracle. And I said, you know, it's Jesus. What was wounded, God had already healed, amen? So God's not done with me yet. He has the final say. He's in control. And so I just want to encourage you, if you are going through any kind of medical issues or going through any storm, give it to Jesus. Because He's going to restore anything that is stolen from you and bless you beyond your wildest dreams. Amen. Did you guys catch what she said? She said, I passed on the operating table two times. She, that, that means she died. She gone. All right, But guess what? What God had started, the devil couldn't even stop. And Jesus specializes in dead situations. See, death could not hold Jesus down in the grave. After three days, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was raised again to life. Jesus walked by the casket of the widow of Nain's son, and he laid his hands on it, and he raised up that boy to life once again. Jesus called out to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth! And Lazarus came walking out of the grave, and he has now given that authority to the church. You find Peter going and raising the dead Tabitha arise right here you find that Jesus specializes in dead situations and we cannot stop at death because God has defeated death in his son Jesus Christ don't stop don't quit don't let up whatever God has started the devil cannot stop see this is a God thing this church is a God thing did you know that we would not be here if it wasn't a God thing if this wasn't a God thing, we might as well shut the doors and go watch TV because this has to be a God thing. Otherwise, what are we investing our lives into? Your life is a God thing. What has God started? What has God started here at The Rock? Well, God took two people with hearts, two people who would be obedient, two people who were pastoring up in the mountains, Pastor Jim and Pastor Deborah Cobray, and as they were up there in the mountains pastoring every night, they would see the city lights down here in the valley, and they had hearts for people, and so they started to pray, started to believe God, and ask God for the nation, ask God for our cities, ask God for the Inland Empire, and they started to pray and started to believe God. And they came down that mountain, they started a church here with 12 people and a box of Kleenex. Why a box of Kleenex? Was it allergy season? Was it flu season or something like that? No, it was because they were weeping. Their hearts were broken. They were believing God for souls. They were, they were believing God for his presence and for his word, and so as, as they had broken hearts, they needed that Kleenex to wipe up their faces because their hearts were leaking out of their eyes, right? And that's why today, if you check your seats, if you look around you, you will find a box of Kleenex somewhere nearby you because God touches people still to this day because what God started, the devil cannot stop. And it was out of those hearts that God started bringing people to Jesus. There was rapid growth. There were people coming. They, they started to ask God for the wells of salvation. The Bible says, therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. So they started to ask God for people, started to ask God for souls, started to give aggressive altar calls. Get in your face about your salvation. And like you saw today, offering people an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And people started coming. We have had hundreds of thousands of people over the 29 years that we have been a church who have walked our aisles and given their hearts and lives to Jesus just in the church itself, just on our campuses, just in our children's and youth ministries. That's not what goes on outside of this church in the prisons and on the streets and all over the world. See, God started bringing people to Jesus, and we realized we need to take care of them. We need to keep them coming to Jesus. We need to disciple them. We need to restore them, and that's why we started the SPTs, the Spiritual Personal Trainers, and that's why we started Breaking Free, and that's why we have discipleship programs and, and, and the growth path and the next steps and all this stuff that we're doing is so that we can get people in healthy habits of coming to Jesus day in, day out, building their lives for home as well as for church for life. What else did God start doing? Well, God started bringing people to Jesus. I want to show you another testimony today of a young man by the name of Terrence, who his father died when he was just 12 years old. And listen to the work of God that he did in this young man's life, bringing him to Jesus. Check out the overheads once again. Well, who was I before I met God? <laughs> uh, this, on, this thing's on? I'm on camera. <laughs> oh. I was crazy, you know, I, just, I did whatever I wanted. I thought I was untouchable. 
it's interesting with God. You know, he's very, he's very creative in the ways that he comes into, into people's lives. And with myself, it all started with really the passing of my father. And uh, just the, the difference that is going one day with the father, who's, who's your best friend, your superhero, and the next day, kind of searching again. So for me, it was always just talking to God, just questioning, Lord, why, why did this happen? I know you love me, but I just don't understand how something so so terrible could happen, especially at this point in my life, I'm about to be a teenager. I, I knew who God was. I had, like how Pastor Jim says, I had the head knowledge, but the heart knowledge wasn't there. So really, I tried to do things my way, still acknowledging that God was God, you know, even while I was still going to church, but really not listening to the things that he, that he was really saying, just thinking that. I had fire insurance so somewhat and that he would just bail me out anytime I had a problem. And I found out that he did bail me out every time I had a problem, but when you actually listen to what he says, you don't have to go through too many problems. And really just falling on my falling on my butt a few times made me came to the understanding of who God was and how much he loved us and how powerful he really is. And my mom brought me to the rock and you know, just the, just the genuineness that I, that I get at The Rock. You can tell these people really do care about you, not because they tell you they love you, but they ask you questions that somebody that loves you only would ask you. You know, they actually want to get to know you. I volunteer in the kids' ministry, and that's, that's a huge blessing for me. Like, I guess I'm changed. I'm changed. I don't know how, what changed. I'm changed. Just the whole me as a whole, 100% changed. And my hair is blonde, too. That's changed. <laughs>
And so we started to build Jesus into people. We started to build relational connections. You know, we need each other. We need each other to stir one another up into love and good deeds. We need those godly relationships. And so we started to build Jesus into people. Also, we, we just started to build into the fabric of who we are, planting churches. We've had the pl- privilege of planting some great churches that carry the same DNA that will build Jesus in people. That's what this is all about. Remember this year, God started something significant in our church. God started to grow us, right? We talked about this, that, that this year God started something. He started to grow us. What does that mean? Remember, we're going to grow in giving today as we bring that offering. I believe that this is a, a significant part of what God is doing in our lives, that today is a day of breakthrough, that we grow as we get. You cannot grow without giving, not just finances, time, talent, treasure, that God wants to use your life and that as you pour out, that God will pour in and refill and refresh every area of your life, that we're going to grow in relationships, that we are going to connect. We are going to love one another as Christ loved each other right? We're going to be forgiving and overlook offenses, and we're going to continue to grow relationally. And we're going to grow in our outreaches. We're going to go get more people for Jesus. We're going to do more good in our community because good works, and we know that it works something in people's hearts and lives when we do good, and that we're going to grow in our worship and our sacrificial obedience, laying down our lives before the Lord and doing what God tells us to do. God started that in our church in January. And listen, wouldn't the devil love to distract us? Wouldn't he love to get us busy so that we we, we ignore the things that God is doing? Wouldn't he love to get us off track or maybe to get us lazy or discouraged? I don't really see the growth. I I don't really see anything happening. But listen, guys, as we press in, as we focus on what God is doing, as we bind the work of the enemy and we release our faith, I believe that this next half of this year is going to be the greatest portion of our year we have ever seen before, that there is an outpouring that God wants to pour out on the Rock Church and World Outreach Center and do something amazing, not just in this church, but in each and every one of our lives in this place. God wants to bless you. God wants to to grow you. God wants to bring increase. God wants to bring a prosperity, not just finances and money. No, God wants you to have the capacity to succeed in every area of your life. And as we focus on what God is putting in our path, the devil cannot stop it. Come on, somebody. (laughs) 29 years ago, God started a great church. God's doing great things. The devil and all hell cannot stop what God is doing here at The Rock and the Inland Empire as well as around the world. Last week we were in a verse. I want to remind you of it. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. Turn there with me in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. I want to remind you of this verse because it's where we're going today. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. You remember the Apostle Paul is talking to them about giving, talking to them about bringing an offering that will bless others And he says this in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 10. He says, now may he who supplies seed to the sower. Remember, God is the initiator. God's the one who started this all. This is not the will of man. This is the will of God. You are here at this time, in this hour, not because of the will of two people that got together in a drunken stupor on a one-night stand. You are not here because they planned on having babies. You're not here for any other reason than that God ordained that you be here for such a time as this. And now the Bible says, may he who supplies seed to the sower. God is your source. God is your supply. God is your initiator. He is the alpha. He is the author. He is the beginning. He is the one who starts it all. And God is going to do something significant today. God is starting something. God is birthing something. God is supplying a seed of faith for some of you in this place. God is supplying a seed of vision for your future. God is supplying a seed of growth in your life. God wants to do something. And may he who supplies seed to the sower, and look what it says, and bread for food, he's also your sustainer. He's also the one that's going to carry you through every trial, every problem, every pain. Because oftentimes when that seed goes forth, it says it must fall to the ground and die. Just like we've been talking about, but what God has started, the devil cannot stop. Bread for food, look at what he says, supply and multiply the seed which you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. See, this is something that is much greater than just giving an offering. Today, this is much greater than just sowing a financial seed and receiving a financial seed back, even though that is something that we see as a principle in the Word of God. This is something that as we sow our faith, as we sow our heart, as we sow our life, that God says, I want to get into your marriage. I want to get into your business. I want to get into your children. I want to get into your community. I want to get into your future. I want to get into your dreams and vision, and I want to bring increase. I want that thing to overflow into every area of your life. See, the blessing of God 
God is messy. The blessing of God is sloppy. The blessing of God as he pours it out on you. You are a vessel. You are a container, but you only have a certain capacity. And as God pours out a blessing on you, so much so that you cannot contain it, that blessing will slop over into your family. That blessing will slop over into your neighbors. That blessing will pour over into your community. That blessing will pour over into your church. That blessing will pour over into every area of your life. God wants to increase the fruits of your righteousness. Philippians chapter 1 verse number 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, God is doing a work in you. God is not finished with you yet. God's not finished with me yet. We're not perfect yet. There will come a day where we'll get a new body and we'll go be with him forever and ever. I look forward to that day. But until that day, God is moving in our lives. God has started something. God has sown seed. God has supplied us. But God will also sustain us. And guess what? God will be the finisher. God is the author and the finisher. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. Why? So that he can get the glory. He can get the honor. He can get the praise for what he's done, what he's accomplished. Hallelujah. Today, I want to end with one more testimony of a great couple in our church. They were just here at the altars helping people come to Jesus. And I want you to listen to their life. I want you to listen to what God did in and through them. The seed that God started, the seed that God supplied, and how they came to the right. I want you to hear the time frame, how long it took, because listen, guys, this isn't an instant. This isn't put a coin in and pull a lever and down comes the blessing. No, this is a seed, and it's going to take time. It's going to take a process, and the devil's going to attack. He's going to try and stop it. But what God has started, the devil cannot step. Watch the overhead screens one more time. Um, growing up, we never really went to church. Um, we came from pretty much dysfunctional, disconnected families. We, we moved in together and we started life really, really young. We were just partying, I guess. Yeah, and, partying. Then, <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden, we realized that, you know, we were married and we had two kids at the time. And life was hard. It just kind of hit us. Yeah, we knew we loved each other, but it just wasn't working. So we knew we needed a change. We, we knew it was beyond us. So we came on uh, Easter, and uh, we said, Lord, if you give an altar call, we're going to go forward. And uh, they gave an altar call, and we went forward. Yes. And we, we just got on fire from there. Shortly after that, uh, we just went through a fire, uh, just, a, just a trial. I mean, just attack. Um, things just came up. They say that once um, you get saved, you have the enemy does everything he can to try and get you back. And yeah, I had a target. Yeah. I had a huge target on my back. The Lord called me to the night service. It was a time where the church, it was doing prayer. It was a prayer, just, it was just kind of like a revival, just moving and people was just praying. I could feel his restoration, his grace on me. We was in the word every day struggling, but we was getting the application. Everybody that went in the pulpit, I mean, the word was just coming forth. I came out of that, she came out of breaking free, and then we was just came together in, in the unity. And at that time, we had no house. We was living in a little apartment, 640 square feet. And uh, we, but we said, you know what, Lord? We wanna build your house and we want you to build our house. Right away, the Lord put a mount on our heart. We, we put that into the church. And my old professor offered me a new job, on a job. When I asked him how much it was, it was double what I was making. So literally, we could afford a house now. And then uh, we got the house and we said, Lord, we're going to dedicate this house to you. We want to consecrate this house to you. This is your house. And every time we got involved at The Rock, God blessed us. I mean, and we just pretty much said, we're going to do what God have us to do. And God, you take care of our life and we'll take care of your house as much as we can do and with the grace you give us. And so that's what we've been doing here for the last 10 years at The Rock. Today, it's our birthday celebration weekend. We've been preparing our hearts to bring an offering to give. It's going to bless the church. It's going to help us to build the kingdom of God. It's going to help us with the summer months. Should there be any lack that I'm believing God that that's not going to happen. It's going to help us to continue to reach out, to continue to touch lives with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I believe that this goes much further than just this house as a church, just the rock church. I believe that this goes into your life. 
that this is an overflow. And that as you honor God first, and as you build God's house, that God will build your house. That God will do great and mighty, wonderful things. We, we could share testimonies all day long of people who got involved in what God was doing. And God got involved in their lives in a greater measure and in a greater way. Today, maybe you've brought your offering. Maybe you brought that yellow envelope back that we've handed out over the past couple of weeks. And you were prepared. But maybe today as we were talking, the Lord spoke something to your heart to do today. Maybe today you want to just get the envelope and pray about it. And you want to bring something that God's put on your heart. Maybe you can do that today or maybe you can save that and bring it later. Whatever works. Because this is about your heart. This is about you doing what God has called you to do. Getting your faith involved. Putting it in a practical way. Sowing a seed and watching God bring the supply, but also the multiplication back into your life. I'm going to ask the ushers to stand. And if you do need an envelope, maybe you got one of those envelopes before, or you need an envelope for today, and you'd like to bring a special birthday offering, just raise your hands and they'll hand you one of those. Additionally, they do have the text to give with the word birthday. If you'd like to give towards it with the text to give, you've already got that set up. We're going to bring this together in a moment, but I'm, I'm going to ask my wife, Pastor Jessica, to come to the stage at this time and share a word that God shared with her that I believe is for our church. As we prepare our hearts to give, I want you to just listen to what God shared with her. Hi, Rock Church. How are you? Good. Well, I was just having some time with the Lord and and um, talking to him about some God assignments that he had been giving Dan and I. And, um, you know, I'm a very big personality, I guess people say. I don't know what people say about me, but I don't really care. But the reality is, is I'm kind of a push-through personality. But in those push-through moments, sometimes you have moments of insecurity. And you have moments of like, oh my goodness, what is on the road for me? And so I was in that moment. I was in the moment of, God, what do you have? And he said this to me. He said, I want you to go to Joel. What's going on? Oh, okay. I want you to go to Joel. So if you turn with me to Joel 2, Joel 2, God began to speak a word over this church to me, and it was just a beautiful word that we wanted to share with you. In Joel 2, 23, it says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. The Lord stopped me at that moment, and he said, What this is representing is the former rain has been the 29 years that your parents have plowed ground, sown, cried, prayed, tilled the ground, given, given, given. I was the kid behind the scenes, and my parents would give you the shirt off their backs. They gave everything for the house of God, and they built a beautiful house. And so that is what that is. And then it says, and he will cause the rain to come down on you. And for me and Dan, that was a beautiful word because it was like, okay, we're the ones that God needs to carry this church to the next level. And so we believe that God has something for us. It continues on. It says the former rain, which is the 29 years before for us, Rock Church, and now the latter rain, which is what is coming in the first month. I believe God has the old and the new. We are going to have the rain and the spirit of God fall upon this church again. I believe for revival. I believe that every seat that is empty in this room is going to be filled with a soul serving God, passionate for the things of God, and that no weapon formed against this church will prosper. And then the Lord went on to say in verse 24, that the threshing floor shall be full of wheat. Oh, I'm, I'm receiving that. And the vats shall overflow with new wine and new oil. If you don't understand the word of God, that is an abundance of blessing. You see, back then, wine and oil was like gold and silver for us. It was what they needed to survive. And God is saying, Rock Church, and if you're part of this family and this is your church, this is your home, God has new wine and oil for you in your homes and for this church. And what has happened in our church, and I've been here for the past 29 years, and I saw it all. And I saw the season of when this transition began, that there was a recession that hit our city. It hit us hard. And people lost their homes. People lost a lot of things. We were hit. All of us were hit. And a lot of things were taken from you and from this church. We had to let go 20 people that we loved dearly because just to survive and to hold on. But we stayed strong in the midst of it. God held us together. We lost people to a false doctrine. We lost people to so many different things. And, and as a pastor, that's the biggest heartbreak for you because you love people. 
And so I felt like the enemy had robbed us. He had stolen from us. He had taken some territory from the Rock Church. And I was broken about it. And this is what the Lord spoke about that in verse 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts and the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I have sent among you. You shall eat plentiful and be satisfied. You will praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt, dealt wondrously with you. Sorry, the page flipped. I'm getting too Pentecostal here. <laughs> And my people shall never be put to shame. And then you shall know that I am the Lord your God in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Rock Church, we're giving today in faith. We're giving today for a miracle. We're giving today because your homes need to be blessed. You need the new wine and the new oil. And this church, I believe God wants to pour out on us because a rock church and rural outreach center is the name of our church on purpose because God wants to expand us into greater capacity. There's more things ahead of us and we can't do this alone without the presence and the love of God. And so today as we seed, what is your need? What is your need in your family? If this is your church, let me explain something to you. You come under the umbrella and the anointing and the favor of God when you come into a church. You don't just visit a church. You become part of the church. You become the DNA of this church. This is your church. These are your people. This is your family. And God covers us. And there's a blessing. And there's a blanket and an anointing. And God wants to pour out an anointing on us. And I believe that what we're doing today is we're believing God for new things. We're believing God for greater measures like we've been singing. We've been, we are believing God that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray together. But I want to pray as a family. So I'm going to ask you all to stand up. And I'm going to ask you to link hands. If you're watching online and you're with your family, stand up, hold hands together, and be in agreement with us. If you're by yourself watching, just stand up and get in faith. Now, if you're a man, Dan says that you guys do the whole shoulder thing. You totally can do that, and I'm fine with that. And we're going to pray a blessing over these offerings. Can we do that and believe God for a supernatural miracle? Lord, we thank you that we get the opportunity to seed into your house. Lord, we ask that you would build your house, Lord. And Lord, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, we pray for every home represented in this room, Lord. We pray for salvation to reign in the homes of these people. Lord, we pray for unity. We pray for love. We pray for the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Oh, Holy Spirit, as we give today, God, there are miracles that are needed in this room. And Lord, as they give today, God, if they need a supernatural healing miracle in their bodies, Lord, I ask for healing to fall in place. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against them will prosper. Lord, I pray that their children would rise and call their parents blessed. And Lord, I pray that their children would serve you all the days of their life, Lord. And Lord, that these kids, these young adults, these, these children, God, that they would shout your name from the rooftops. And Lord, we thank you, God, for the generations that are going to pour out of the rock church as we're planted. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for the anointing of God to fall on these offerings. And Lord, for the favor of God to multiply every seed, that it would go into the highways and the byways, Lord, that we would see wells of salvation spring up out of the ground. And Lord, we call every seed filled. We call a soul to be saved, sitting in it, renewed, restored, and reconciled. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.